In this video, um, I'm going to show you how you can apply a texture to a face. You can either apply it to multiple faces or to individual faces like I did with the color. Now I'm going to go to, to Google and because many of our buildings have brick that we'll be working on, I'm going to give you the demonstration on brick. Now I have already searched, but what I did not do is I did not go into um, my settings and look for, um, actually it's down here, um, I'm going to go to images, but I want to make sure under tools, I have usage rights, creative commons license. This is the stuff that you have the ability to work with. Just get in the habit of doing that so you're not infringing on anybody's copyrights. Now, I'm just going to choose a random brick pattern that I like. Um, I like this one right here. I'm going to right click on this and then I'm going to do save image as. Now, the next part is really important. Where are you going to save the image? I didn't do this in the video, but when I make uh, my cube, I had set the project and I had gone in to create my project window for my folders. So when I save this image, I have to put it in a specific location. So I'm going to go to my desk, desktop and I'm going to go into my Maya projects folders um, and it's not there. So I'm going to then scroll down until I see Maya project two. That's where these things are. Now I built a project today called tutorial videos. Now I have a folder for images and source images. I sometimes forget where the images go, so I'm going to put it in source images, but it's one or the other. As long as you know where it is, you can get to it. I'm going to just call the file brick, and it is a JPEG. You can use JPEGs or PNGs or GIF files. I'm going to click save. Now, I'm going to rotate so I can work with this side. I'm going to go back into the hypershade mode. Now in the last video, I created blends. I'm going to create a Lambert this time. Again, the Lambert has a less shiny um, example. Now, I want you to notice that this is Lambert 2. Lambert 1 was the default. Do you see the default color on your shape? That's because Lambert 1 is that default color. Leave Lambert 1 alone. Always work with the ones you create. Otherwise, you could accidentally change the color of everything you make in this particular project. I'm gonna call this one brick. Now, instead of choosing a color, I'm gonna to come to the far right and I'm gonna click this little checkerboard button. And in a moment, that's gonna open up this create render node. I'm gonna scroll down until I find file, which is just the fourth one down. When I click file, the color swatch goes away and I then can come in and choose the image by clicking the folder. Now, it defaulted to source images, so it looks like I put it in the right place to start out with, yay me. All right, I'm gonna click brick image. I'm gonna click open. There's my brick, all right? I am going to come back to my window behind it. I am going to uh, I'm just going to do this whole side of this cube. I'm going to come to my brick Lambert. I'm going to right click, assign material to selection. Now, this may look great right away, or it may not look like I did anything at all. Ladies and gentlemen, this is really important. You will not see your textures unless um, this button on your viewport is selected that says textured. If you click that, you will then see your brick. Now my brick, I think is too large. I really don't see um, everything really well that I want to. So instead of reselecting by hand all these individual faces, I'm gonna right click brick and I'm gonna do select objects with material. Now I'm going to come up here in my main window and I'm gonna go to UV and then I've got some different options here. I'm gonna start with automatic and see if that works. Uh, this is gonna relay out 
my brick pattern. And um, so now I can see that it's smaller. Now I have scales, see the squares, and I have moves. I can scale and move and rotate with this whole thing. If I rotate, I go to this circle. If I want to move, it's not moving the pattern, it's kind of moving some of the lighting and things. Um, I can move it that way, or I can scale it, or in this case, it's, it's kind of changing the perspective a little bit, um, but if I go in the center, it'll scale, uh, scaling the whole thing. Um, yeah. All right, so if I go to the ends there, so if you do want to scale it, there you go, that's gonna rotate that a little bit. Okay, so then when you're done, you just click off of it and there's your brick pattern, okay? Now, if you do not have the object selected, you're not gonna see those lines. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go into object mode. So you see again, object mode is noted with green, face mode was blue, but I'm gonna click off my object so you don't see the lines. So even though these were individual faces, the brick pattern does not, is not broken up by the faces. Um, it is just one solid side. So that's how you can apply a texture to a face or multiple faces. Now, if I have another object, I'm gonna just create a sphere and I'm gonna move it over here. I'm going to scale it so it's a little larger so you can really see it. If I have the whole object selected, I can assign a color to the whole object without going in the face mode. I can also assign the texture instead, okay? Now again, if that brick is too big, um, I can go back to my, um, it's only gonna mess with this one because that's the one selected. I can go to automatic. I can also try, since this is a sphere, I can try spherical and that may kind of wrap it around a little bit more, okay? Um, so it doesn't look so flat. It looks like it's rotating around a little bit. So depending on what your shape is, will help you depend on what these are. Planar is gonna be flat. The cylinder is used for this button there for the cylinder tool. Um, best plane is also a good one to use. It'll help you decide what to do. Um, now, if I have another shape, I'm just gonna create another cube. And this used my default um, that I had earlier, which is gonna be, um, I'm gonna go back to object mode. It's gonna have uh, too many things. So I'm gonna come over here and just change it to a three by three by three and three divisions. Now, if I have a shape and I had selected faces and I did select, let me get the select tool. If I did select faces like this, this is gonna be similar to how you might do the columns, okay? I'm gonna apply the brick. Now, do you see how that may not lay like you would expect it? If I have all that selected, um, I'm gonna, I deselected the shape. So I'm gonna, oh, see how that select everything with the brick? If I just want these, I will then have to select these separately. All right, um, again, you just may sometimes need to play with these. I'm gonna do best plane and see what that does. I'm, I may try to go in and do planar and see if that makes, oh, I need to reselect because I clicked off of it. I have a habit of doing that so I can see it. So sometimes to get what you want, you just have to kind of play with it to see um, what it looks like. See, now it looks okay on one side, but it doesn't look good on the other side. So sometimes you have to select differently, select the different faces that you wanna do so it um, does correctly. Now, it's still going off of that. So you see how it's weird? I'm gonna have to come out and I can play with this scale button. Um, and sometimes you have to rotate a little bit to get things looking like bricks, okay? Now, this is kind of really close together, so it's getting really difficult to pull that apart. 
So I may think, well, that's really not working well for me. So I may go try and I may just try best plane or, um, and again, I clicked off my faces. I need to remember to do that. UV best plane, UV automatic. Okay. It's still deselecting. Let me go back to best plane. Didn't really do it. So I'm going to press undo, undo right now, which is going to reselect for me. So I don't have to do that. Um, you can try a contour stretch. Now, had I um, selected all of these, let me go to the other side of it. Let me rotate my shape. So um, I don't want to rotate the face. I want to rotate the entire object. So I had to go back to object mode. If I am just doing these two, these two sides, and I haven't used all of these before. Right now, I'm just I'm just playing. I'm trying to see what might work best for doing two sides. Where we did the spherical over here, we may try contour stretch and see how that works. Um, it also helps if you apply the texture before you do contour stretch. Um, but that actually worked out pretty well. It looks like it's wrapping around the shape. So I'm gonna come over here so you can see that. So that looks kind of cool. All right, so I wanted to um, show you a couple of different ways to apply both color and texture. And in this video, we covered texture. Remember, you're going to choose either a Lambert or a blend. If you want a texture, you will come over here and click the checkerboard, which will then bring open the ability to check, uh, choose file and then make your selection based on that.